It was once an old woman, and she lived with her young grandson upon the moors. But they were poor. They had nothing to eat. And at the end of the month, when the moon shone full and round, the old woman said to her grandson, Go to the rich man's house, the great lord of the manor. Tell him that tonight there will be a hare running on the moors, and he will give you money. So the boy ran from his grandmother's little cottage there on the moors, and he ran to the great manor house of the great lord, and he knocked upon the door. Will you knock upon the door with me? And the door flew open, and there stood the great lord. What is it you want, boy? Tonight there is a hare running on the moors. Ha ha, said the great lord, and he gave the boy a silver sixpence. And the great lord rode out upon his steed, his great horse, and he rode out onto the moors with his hounds baying in front. Let's hear those baying hounds. And soon, soon they found, well, I'll tell you, back in that cottage, that old woman cast upon herself a spell. For she was no ordinary old woman. She herself was indeed a and as she sang, and as she stepped, her arms became lean, and her legs became strong, and her ears grew long, and her eyes grew bright, and fur grew upon her body, for she transformed herself into a hare, and she ran from her cottage across the moors, and soon the hounds were upon her snapping and biting, but she was too quick. Quick as she ran and did the hounds, and the hounds could not catch that hare. Switching back and forth until suddenly, before that great lord, that hare just seemed to vanish. And he rode back to his home. Well, that month, the old woman and the boy, they had plenty to eat. Good meat, good bread. The moon waned, and the moon waxed, and when the moon was full once more, did they have any more food to eat? No longer. It had all run out. And the old woman said to her, son, her grandson, Go out on the moors again. Go to the great lord's house, and tell him there is a hare running upon the moors, and he will give you money. Amen. So again the boy ran to the great lord of the manor's house and he knocked upon the door. And the door flew open and there the great lord What again. Yes, a hare once more. A silver sixpence. And the boy took it. And there that great lord rode out upon his horse behind his hounds, and the hounds bayed louder than before. <coughs> and out they chased, and there was the hare. Quick they were upon it, but the hare was fleet-footed, and switched left and right, zigzagging here and there. Could the hounds catch the hare? No. no. And in that very same place as before, the hare just vanished. Well, the great lord rode home. Nothing had he caught upon the hunt. And once more, that old woman and that grandson, they had enough to eat with that silver sixpence. Good meat, good bread. And the moon waned, and the moon waxed. And when the moon was full and bright one month later, did they still have enough to eat? No longer. And you know what the old woman said to her grandson, don't you? Say it with me. Go to the great lord of the manor and tell him there is a hare running on the moors tonight. So the boy went running. The great lord of the manor was ready this time. 
for he had begun to become suspicious. And when the boy knocked upon the door, the door flew open, and there he was already upon his horse, and there next to him was the vicar, and he upon his horse too. And they rode out after that hare across the moors, with their hounds baying in front. But the hares were too quick this time, for the hare was not prepared. And the hare had those hounds snapping at her heels, and they bit at her neck, and they snapped at her legs. And so fast did she run, but not fast enough. And in that place she came to, where the old woman's cottage was, she vanished. But the great lord and the vicar ran round to the front door, and with one knock from the vicar, with the power of the church behind him, the door opened, and there they stood in that small and humble cottage, and there in her bed was the old woman, a sheet over her, but they could see the teeth marks of the house in her neck. But now she had transformed herself back into the form of an old woman. And the great lord of the manor said, You, witch, you will be tried. And she was taken before the court. And there sat the judge in all his noble majesty. And the judge listened to the case brought by the church and by the great lord. And the judge said, Witch, this witch must be killed. Do you think the witch should be killed? And there, up in the court, there spoke a boy. It was none other than her grandson. About your age he was, or perhaps yours. And what do you think he said to the judge? Anybody want to say? What? Who said it? Somebody said it. What did you say? Don't kill my grandmother. Spare her life. And why, said the judge, should I spare your grandmother's life if she is indeed a witch? And the boy gave the reason why. And what was that reason? We are poor. How can we eat? How can we live upon the moors? Well, pleading poverty. And the judge sat and he thought and he said, Very well, I give you one more chance. No more witchcraft must be practised upon these moors. And so it was that that old woman, with the power of witchcraft, lived on to the end of her days, providing as best as she could for that boy.